and welcome to episode 81 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is February 24th, and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. So hey. today we want to pick up a discussion that is extremely relevant for our customers, um, security. With um, Microsoft Sentinel, we have a great SIEM, so a security information and event management um, solution. For SAP and Microsoft customers, it gets even better with the extension for SAP, which now brings in also data from the SAP system. For this, we have Joab, Kobe, and Aaron joining us today. But before we hand over to them, let's take a quick look at the news from this week. And I want to start with um, Martin Frick. Martin Frick is, is continuing his blog post series about um, the SAP and Teams integration. And remember his architecture picture where we had um, Teams, obviously, where we have the success factor system. And there's also the um, BTP, the business technology platform with the cloud integration um, services in, in between as, as one vehicle to send um, the, the information from success factors to Teams. And in, in part six now, he talks about how to set up um, the SAP cloud integration instance. So how you go to the um, business technology platform, what you need to do to set up um, the, the initial configuration, what you need to do to set up the, the connection to your success factor system and so on. And yeah, just the, the, the next iteration of uh, the, um, uh, the post here. Good, um, moving on. Um, obviously, when you do these kinds of integration, one thing is important, and that is single sign-on. And, and Carlos Rogan has created a new um, blog post that talks about OAuth, OAuth 2.0, um, how does it work? How do you um, exchange the system uh, or the, the specific tokens? I mean, this this blog post is, is not related necessarily to Azure Active Directory, but I think it gives a nice overview of um, what is OAuth and um, how does it work? And, and obviously also in our context and like what we discussed with um, Martin Pankratz and Martin Reple in, in, in the past, how the really the end-to-end -end <laughs> flow from Azure Active Directory to the SAP system. I mean, they, they basically rely on these concepts here. So I thought um, the blog post from um, from Carlos here is, is very extensive. It, he really guides you through the steps of um, setting up applications, then doing the configuration, setting up the trust registering applications and so on, and then um, really going through, uh, you, know, you can see it's a very lengthy blog post, then really going through to an authentication flow here. you Well, here's the quick guide, but there's um, somewhere you can see here, yeah, you really see um, once you publish the application, uh, how you have then an, an authentication flow enabled on the business technology platform. Um, the next thing is um, a new entry in our docs.microsoft.com. So it's about importing SAP OData meta metadata as an API to Azure API management. Um, for our regular listeners, um, you, you probably um, find this, this topic very familiar. And actually, if you look at the contributors, um, Martin um, Martin Pankratz was very very active um, in in creating this document. So here it's now an official documentation of what you can do if you have an SAP OData service. Um, obviously with um, the the OData specification there. Um, as you know, API management currently does not support a direct um, integration of OData services. But with this workaround, um, basically that that Martin. Um, has has developed here. You can um, take the OData service, you create an open API specification out of this, and there's even um, an online tool for this. So there's a there's a, um, a command line tool that you can use, but there's also somewhere there's a link. I I clicked it before, but uh, here's the uh, the tool. Is this the web tool that they created? No. Well, there, there's somewhere. I I don't see it right now. There, there's a link to a web-based, um, to uh, here the web-based um, converter that allows you to really import the um, metadata file, and then as a result, you get the open API specification. Once you have that, then you can take it into Azure API management. Um, the um, um, structure is created automatically for you, basically, and then you can use this API 
um, from yeah oh, from is, Azure. Is, is this more or less same like importing visible file in web service time? So just to have a construct and then you can consume that web service. Exactly. So yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. Similar like that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's a really a really beautiful thing that that enables now also an easier consumption of O data services of SAP O data services in Azure okay. API management. Nice. Good. The next thing is um, a blog post on the SAP community, um, and there uh, by Rangesh TKB that talks about um, how to use Power BI in the context of SAP. Data Warehouse Cloud, which I thought was was quite interesting. So, if you are an SAP Data Warehouse Cloud customer, then how can you actually connect this with um, Power BI? And in this blog post, um, uh, Rangesh talks about uh, how to use uh, an ODBC connection um, uh, to to connect Power BI to your um, Data Warehouse Cloud. So again, um, he he details out the the required steps, how to do this, how to um, create the connectivity, how to retrieve the information of your your host, then how to install the ODBC um, connectivity, and then uh, yeah, get uh, or create a nice dashboard in Power BI um, connecting to an um, uh, the the data warehouse cloud. Good. Then um, one last minute um, information or update from um, Goran. The Windows <laughs> Server 2022 certification, okay. right? So there was, a, I think it was released just yesterday, the news. Uh, I saw it today. Um, actually, it's a support statement on new Windows uh, 2022. Um, uh, basically, when you see it's a lot of those uh, starting from 7.0 SR3 edition, you know, on a different NetWeaver. And so on, and also reflecting the different database. So of course, it says reflect the products as well as S for HANA, where you would use the App Server. That's kind of also popular scenario. App Layer on a Windows mm -hmm. and HANA on a Linux, but also basically re reflecting other databases like MaxDB, SQL Server, and all others. And even if those databases are like uh, IBM, which would run on ZOS, okay, then it's of course then there that the application layer would be on Windows, where you need an, a client, uh, uh, client DB client must be supported, right? So I I also by the way I just check on uh, do we have any update statement for Azure? I haven't seen it yet, but I believe it's just a matter of time that that's also officially. Um, that statement comes in, in the Azure part, so uh, yeah. Cool. So I think ni nice news. Some some news also yeah, on our clustering. There is no tools, but basically, new version is there, and many it was cooking a long time. Yeah, this um, testing and uh, porting and uh, from SAP, so finally is there. So feel free to enjoy it. Perfect. Cool, perfect. So, so now everyone should switch to Windows Server 2022. Um, the next thing is uh, announcement of SAP Sapphire. So um, SAP Sapphire will happen in May, or actually it will start in May, um, unlike, um, well, uh, pre-COVID times where there was one big Sapphire in, in Orlando. Um, now there are actually um, Sapphire, Sapphires around the globe. So um, it will start May 10th in, in Orlando, so, so there will be um, one uh, big conference, but then across the world in Mexico, Madrid, Zurich, Tokyo, Munich, um, there will be additional um, sapphires, well, actually across the year, as you can see, so starting in May, June, July, um, September. So I think um, that's definitely also something that I'm also looking for yeah. uh, to, to 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 meet other um, customers and partners again, and to um, to interact them. Yeah, during during the Sapphire event, so really great. Good. With this, we already switched to the security related um, topics, and um, I came across one um, YouTube video. Um, that was the secure SAP on Microsoft Azure Airlift. I actually think we had talked about this in, in one of our previous show or we had announced it and now um, there is a recording. So it's a fairly long recording, almost three hours. 
um, with obviously a lot of content. And um, I think Joao, you, you are also presenting there. You were also presenting. We have um, Evren also um, presenting. So he was also in the show um, before. So you know he's um, extremely engaged and and deep into the whole networking and security topics. And and there are a few other colleagues um, also presenting. And I think well, if you if you can spend um, three hours to to listen to this um, holistic approach of um, securing SAP and and um, on Azure, I think this is definitely worth um, watching. If you want to attend a live event, um, then there's um, part of the fast track of, um, for Azure Live um, series. There's another um, upcoming event, so in 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 April. That's um, about Azure monitoring for SAP solution and also the Microsoft Sentinel continuous threat monitoring for SAP. So today you get a good teaser, I would say. But then if you also want to have another um, session um, with Vinod and Yid um, from the Fast Track team, then I think you can also register um, for this event and, and, and get an update on these topics. Looking at some, and, and basically I want to now bridge and, and, and hand over to our um, ex experts, to our special guests. Um, we had talked already about um, this um, blog post here about protecting Microsoft's SAP workload with Microsoft Sentinel. So basically um, how um, we are using Azure Sentinel or Microsoft Sentinel internally, but I'll, I'll stop talking about this obviously because we have the experts um, here. Actually, um, Kobe just released um, Another blog post yesterday about um, yeah the, the latest news. And again, I, I don't want to go through this because we'll, we'll hear much more about this, but just um, a few other um, links um, on um, Azure Sentinel that we'll obviously also put in the, in the in the show notes so you can take a closer look at that. Um, I think here in this one, yeah, we, we also had um, a lot of um, different smaller webinars and there are um, a few here for um, the SAP mini series to talk about uh, the introduce introduction of Azure Sentinel or the end to end installation of Azure Sentinel. So um, if you want to do this hands on, obviously, then there are also um, resources um, for this available. But with this um, enough um, of me or us talking about this, let's um, hand over to our um, three special guests and um, maybe <laughs> before you dig into the the the, the uh, hardcore topics. Maybe you can quickly introduce yourself, and then I'm really looking forward to seeing the latest and greatest of um, Microsoft Sentinel and SAP. So, uh, hi everyone, Yoav. I lead the product management team uh, for security, where SAP is definitely uh, a crown jewel uh, in that team, and and also Kobe here. Uh, so, um, um, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Joab. Uh, yeah, I'm Kobe. Uh, also work on the product um, product group from uh, Sentinel in Microsoft. Uh, working on the SAP solution for the past uh, ten months, I think, something like that, almost a year. Uh, thanks. Cool. Hi everyone, my name is Aaron Hillard. I manage our SAP security team here at Microsoft, um, part of what Microsoft calls Microsoft Digital, aka our IT organization, and we're basically customer zero for Joab and uh, Kobe. Looking forward that, to having a conversation. Thank you. And then that, that's for me again. And I just want to want to refer back to this blog post. This this customer zero thing. That's that's something that we see across the board. So um, mm. Microsoft running SAP on Azure being being one of the first ones. Then Microsoft using all the different PaaS services. And it, it goes even beyond the, the pure um, Azure topic. Obviously, also when we look at Microsoft 365 and stuff like that. I think that's that there are so many things that our customers and partners benefit by us yeah, eating our own dog food and, and, and testing everything um, up front. I would even yeah. like to add to that, that uh, I think that uh, that was one of the most important uh, steps uh, in developing the product was working with our IT department, understanding the real needs from our own, from his team and, uh, and coming up with the solutions that uh, uh, that face all the realities of a very large, uh, very large SAP estate and deployments uh, that, that we have in Microsoft, and that helped us a lot, uh, of course, with also our customers. Yeah. 
and then also having the product group available and iterating quickly on our requests or features uh, bugs and learnings right mm -hmm. so this whole this whole effort's been a learning journey and the evolution that we've gone through to get through the last nine to 12 months to where we're at right now has been tremendous so you know basically it's microsoft working as one so one microsoft and this is a, a good output from that that example cool so as, as mentioned we had already a session uh with joaf and kobe with, with both of you um before where you introduced us to um azure sentinel for sap so what's new what what do we have new in the solution now uh yeah so um the 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 last session was uh, i think uh six or seven months ago so we have we have we have a bunch of news in our in our solution um let me share my screen and i will uh, show you a couple of slides and uh, then i'm gonna go to the sentinel workspace to see see it live uh so uh, so yeah, so we, we we know we I'm gonna I'm gonna talk briefly about the solution. Um, a couple of minutes we talk about the SAP. Uh, why is it, why is it important to you know to um, to track all the events from SAP and why is it important to have SAP connector into Sentinel because the largest strength strength of Sentinel is uh, that Sentinel correlates different events from different logs. So when we get the, the different events from SAP and we call it then with other events from different sources, uh, uh, for example, the, um, the, uh, the firewalls of the, of, the, of the enterprise or the, you know, the on-prem machines, uh, all kinds of DBs that we have, when we uh, call it all together, all events together, we get the full picture of what's happened in our, in our, uh, in our, in our company. Um, and, and of course, I don't need to say it's much better than you know track only SAP events because you need you you need, you need to call it them with other events. Um, so Kobe, can I jump in real quick on that one? Sure. So you know, from a customer perspective or customer zero perspective, it's important for us to have the ability to correlate or cross correlate across applications within our ecosystem, right? So you mentioned some great examples. I just want to broaden that out just a bit more to other applications and data that Sentinel is able to <laughs> leverage and integrate. So giving us that full end to end picture, as you mentioned, is critical for business, uh, critical scenarios, risks, and so forth. And that's the real true power that we're evolving with uh, Sentinel right now. Sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 thank you. Thank you for the, thank you for the, for, the, for that comment. Uh, let me, uh, just a second. Okay, great. So the solution we introduced last time, um, as I mentioned, was broadly changed uh, because we added much more content to the, to the solution. We start with, uh, I think some, somewhere around 30, 30 something analytic rules, uh, which each rule is predefined uh, query that our security teams uh, built and defined according to, uh, you know, to known threats and according to the customer's requests and needs. Um, and today we have uh, more than 50 predefined, more than 50 analytic rules, predefined queries uh, that you get once you deploy the solution. And uh, in addition to that, Last time we showed you one workbook. A workbook is Sentinel, just to clarify, is a dashboard that visualizes the different events that you have in uh, in your system, uh, visualizing you know in charts and graphs, and we're going to see that in the demo. Uh, so in the current solution, we have four different workbooks. Uh, each one contains different uh, activities and different events according to a specific use case. So we have a use case for you know uh, general health of the system to see if it's if it's working to see who logged in who logged out and we have uh, a special um, workbook for suspicious events if you want if you if you want to investigate suspicious events in your uh, in your system in your system so you can go over there and I'm going to talk about that uh, in the demo as well um, that's regarding the solution. Another feature, as you mentioned, Holger, before, uh, which was uh, went to public preview yesterday, is the user master data. Um, SAP stores all kind of data of users in the SAP, of course, because when you log in, you have a user in the SAP. Uh, but it stores it stores much more data. For example, the uh, the profile of the of the user and the role assignment of the user, what groups the user in, is in, um, all of that data. It's it's more than 15, 15 different tables uh, that we stream from the SAP system to Sentinel, um, right now actually. 
Uh, we, see, we have a couple of examples over here. We stream the data and uh, that gives us that gives us the, the ability to uh, to create more analyticals and more um, to control basically the, the, the different users that we get from the SAP to the Sentinel workspace. So for example, in this screenshot, uh, we can see the uh, SAP all profile. Mm -hmm. um, we can see a list of users that has uh, that have this this kind of profile. Um, its name says it all. <laughs> Uh, this profile, I mean, has all permissions in the SAP system. So of course we're gonna, mm -hmm. we want to, you know, we would want to uh, track all users who have this kind of profile, you know, to make sure they don't do anything suspicious or uh, to make sure their identity is is um, is not stolen or something like that. So, um, so basically, do you, do you have some kind of run books which are specifically then targeting use case? Okay what those user with subpol are really were doing you know one is thing is you collect and stream the data but the next next one okay what 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 will you do it with it you know what would you recommend it there exactly so so okay so yeah first of all we stream the data and it's everything by configuration so if if you have uh, SAP for Sentinel and you decide not to stream the data, you can configure by your own in your own environment not to, not to stream that data. But if you decide to stream the data, so we have different analyticals, and in the workbook we have also all kind of queries that we uh, predefine to um, to uh, have the ability, you know, to track the data and to understand better uh, the users that you have on your SAP system and to see them on your Sentinel uh, environment. In addition to that, we correlate those users with other logs from other sources. So if uh, if you're using Azure Active Directory, for example, and the same email account from SAP is in Azure Active Directory, so I can we can correlate together all those events and to understand that user from SAP system did also that and that from the other application and other sources. Okay. Cool. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so we talked about we, we, last time we talked about how does it work. Uh, currently, we have a Docker container that we connect with the Docker container to uh, the SAP system. Uh, we create a user. That user connects to SAP uh, through, and then the data streams back from uh, the SAP system, uh, both on cloud and on prem, through the Docker to Azure Sentinel. And uh, we talked about available logs uh, that we uh, collect that we collect from the SAP to uh, to the Sentinel workspace. Um, I would want to show you uh, the the environment because the demo environment because uh, it's much more interesting to see those slides. Uh, just a second, let me take this window over here. Great. Um, yeah, so. You're familiar with the Sentinel uh, workspace. Uh, when we go to the logs, uh, to the logs uh, section, to the logs tab over here, um, we can see all the ABAP, all the ABAP uh, tables and logs here. Um, ABAP is a language in SAP, so all of the tables are called ABAP something. Uh, and if I'll take an example, let's take, um, I want to take uh, UST, U. UST 04. This table contains all the user master data uh, maps users to profiles. Okay, so we talked about uh, the take 10. We talked about the uh, the SAP all profile before. So this this uh, table contains mm -hmm. all the different users and their profile, and each user can have multiple profile. As you can see, the developer one has SAP all and uh, SA dot system, something like that. Um, so each user can have uh, multiple profiles. Uh, you can see that that user has three different. Now, um, Holger, you can see that and, and say, OK, that's cool. But you said there are, there are more than 15 tables. So I would need to go one by one and query each one, and that's really time consuming, and I don't want to do that. That's why we added th three different functions. Uh, that's called sub user. Three different functions that basically unions those uh, tables and give you the final result. You know, if you want to see uh, SAP user assignment, 
I will delete this one. I will double click that functions. You can search by time. There's a parameter um, and search by time. You can, you know, put in the parameter 10 days ago, but if you run it without a parameter, it takes the seven days ago. That's the default. And then you can, and then it shows you uh, the, the bottom line, basically. Uh, the username, the user email, as in in the SAP system, um, the different, uh, or it's over here, the different profiles uh, those users have. Uh, so let me run it again. There was actually a good example over here of one user that had uh, multiple profiles. Uh, we'll wait 10 seconds and I'll show you again. Um, so those, those three functions basically uh, pulls out the the bottom line and uh, for all the 15 different tables um, and gives you, let me uh, choose another one because. Uh, Just yeah. a, I want to add yeah. that the importance of this in the security realm is uh, cannot be, I mean, cannot be overlooked. Uh, eventually we want to know which of our users are privileged so we know the impact uh, on our system in case we have suspicious activities there. We want to dynamically be able to uh, to select uh, users that you know that eventually have create more risk uh, for our systems, and we want to uh, deeply uh, understand our user base and even find the, uh, the issues with the definitions of the users that may uh, may be over permissive uh, and essentially uh, create uh, an unnecessary risk. Uh, to SAP and, and that bringing together the SAP user data into, into Sentinel gives us this dynamic insight of mm -hmm. what's going on in terms of privilege and access in our system in a way that is, you know, does take under consideration all the complexities of the uh, SAP uh, permissions and authorizations uh, authorization model. Yeah, I have one question regarding uh, GDPR. Huh? So when we are talking from from our perspective, from our service, of course, our services are GDPR compliant, and also SAP system on customer side, maybe also hosted in Azure, yeah, is also GDPR compliant. So, but uh, you know, is there any risk regarding GDPR compliance here? What 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 is your response for that? Okay. So I think I think the most important thing to remember that the data in Sentinel is on the user workspace. So it means that Microsoft does not have access to the data and that the customers can pick and choose which data and doesn't have some uh, filtering capabilities in case of specific regulations. For security purposes, we need, we need to know a lot yeah. about the user. We need to know who is the user uh, that was breached and what he did. And sometimes it starts with a phishing email and we get information from the office uh, connector and then there is a malware deployment on the user and then the user starts to uh, scan our network and we get information from uh, network related uh, 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 entities like firewalls and so on and that also syncs into Sentinel with the IPs and, and sometimes even identify some identified information for who the user is and eventually see what the user did in the SAP system so we need to correlate all those entities to really achieve the maximum level of security but in any case of, of any regulation this is called the customer environment in the region of his preference uh, in, you choose the data center where to put the workspace and in, in, a, in, in a, a, a many control options over what data is actually wired to Sentinel what we see customers choose to post uh, uh, to, to know who are the users who are accessing the systems for security purposes. Yeah. Great, thank you. Great, so um, in time I ran the three functions so you can see the SAP users, users get privilege gives us a, a list of all the privileged users by system and by client so we can create now we, now we can create different analytic rules and maybe you know a new workbook and that will get all those users and to track those activity those users activities uh, you know to if we want just to focus on the users who have who have privilege uh, privilege operate um, permissions um, I ran the user assignments before so yeah so uh, the 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 top two users um, we can see that that they have multiple profiles, so we don't need to to you know to query that table and search for those. So we can just see you know the bottom line over here, 
And one last thing, uh, the authorization uh, function give us the different roles for each one of the users and the authorization details. So also in this in this in this function, you, you, you know you don't need to uh, call it up to union uh, seven different tables over there. So you just get the final result. Uh, so th th this is just brand new. It was in private for two months uh, and we just went uh, public yesterday. Cool. Yeah. And, and I think uh, just one small mm. side note that um, I mean, you, you just said that, um, but it's not only about these 15 tables, but in, in one of the screens, then you could also see the multiple systems. So if I would do this manually, I would really look at these 15 tables in each and every system that I'm, I have running. Here I have one view. And in this one view, I can see all the information um, consolidated, correlated already. And I, I, I don't care in which system this is. I, I have one view across my whole landscape potentially. Exactly. And and that's 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 a comment that we got, I think, from the I if I mean, it's, it's, yes. it was from yeah, it was from your team. Yeah, exactly. that's because yes. yeah, yeah. If you wanna if you wanna tell the story, go ahead. But it, the, those two fields weren't here. I mean, in the table, and then we got. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it, and, exactly. This this helps us, you know, pull together, unify into a single location all the relevant data that we need to basically uh, monitor, maintain, you know, user uh, mapping, permissions, uh, authorization activities, etc. Um, so with this capability, we're now able to see across the clients and systems. So non-prod and prod environments is what we're targeting here. Of course, you know, production is always the key, especially in a SOX environment like ours, where we would need to maintain that rigor, SOX compliance, GDPR compliance, et cetera. But we also need to make sure we maintain our rigor in the non-prod environments where development and configuration is actually initiated. So we're looking at now holistically across these different systems and clients. And I mean, you guys are also delivering some of the workbooks, which I believe based on a scenario that customers are asking for. Um, does the customer also have the ability to create their own workbooks because they will figure it out? OK, we need something specifically. We have the data. Let us put some of those query by ourselves and use it. Is that? Yeah, that's good. That's a great question uh, because I'm gonna actually just show uh, the, the the workbooks and each workbook. I'm, go I'm just gonna say one sentence before each workbook. It is basically a template uh, that the that the user can edit, can change, can remove any uh, you know any visualize can, because it, each each of the charts over there is a query behind the scenes mm -hmm. a query and the users can you know can change anything that they, they want. They can create a new one and they can add it the existing ones. Uh, before I'm going to go to the workbook, I just want to share with you uh, the documentation that we added yesterday when, when we went public with this feature. So we added on our documentation page the different the different tables that we add into the um, to the user mass data. Let me uh, just yeah <laughs> not this one, not this one. Yeah, those are the different tables from the user mass data. Uh, and the three different functions that I just show you. So you have a short description for each one of them and the different um, fields uh, for, the, for the other different uh, functions. And regarding the, the four workbooks that we just, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm, I'm going to show now. Uh, so we have in you know, the, the documentation page, a description for each one of the workbooks and uh, the use case that is uh, uh yeah, cool. yeah so let's go to the workbooks um workbooks over here okay um so because it's a demo environment i have multiple of the same one so i opened them before so uh uh let's i'm not going to show a, a each workbook because um uh i mean i just want to show you the you know the important the important mm -hmm. Uh, stuff over here. So if I start with the audit log browser, that's like the first one. Uh, that's the first uh, workbook that we started to uh, to work with, and uh, it's basically give us a health of, like uh, an overview about our system, uh, the different uh, user logins over the past the past period of time. You can select the period of time that you want to investigate. If you want to see the past ninety days or the past um, the past hour. So you can investigate according to the time that you want to uh, to track on. Uh, so you know if you want to see if 
you know, how many users logged in in the past the past 90 days, number of, of events per, uh, per SAP system. I really like the events tab. Let me show you why. Uh, first of all, uh, it shows us the different events that we get from SAP um, uh, clustered by their severity. Uh, so we, we have low, medium and high. And once we click the high one, the high events, so we get all the different uh, events with high severity and we can scroll over and to see if there's anything, you know, suspicious that we want to, uh, you know, to investigate more deeper. Um, so I really like this one. Uh, there's another there's the, that the same for uh, for the for like over time events over time according to the severity that you chose. So if there's a peak in some day so we can go to that day and understand better what happened that day um, and authorization and authentication gives us again um, logins log out over time, how many successful logins, how many failed logins. That's, that's a very good chart to see if there were multiple failed login in one day uh, because you know there are many um, many uh, uh, suspicious uh, events that uh, can, can be caused from uh, logon failed if there, if, there, if there are multiple logon failed of one user for example. Um, so that's the audit log browser. Can we could we already correlate this information with um, information from Azure Active Directory? So I'm thinking potentially, for example, you would see a lot of failed logins in Azure Active Directory. Then at some point you don't see this anymore, and then all of a sudden you see a lot of failed logins in your SAP system. So maybe you you can detect then a potential malicious hacker that breached Azure Active Directory for whatever reason, or so now he he found the password of the user. And now he's in the network, and the next step is your SAP system. So, so could we at this point already correlate the information with um, with yeah login information from Azure Active Directory? Yeah. So, um, so that's another great question. I I jumped into the analytics to the analytics uh, page because I want to show you. Uh, let's see multiple logons by a user. If there are multiple logons by one user, um, I want to show you that because. For each query, for each of the analytic tools, uh, we have the we have the entity mapping. Entity mapping is a way that we pull out from the query result all mm -hmm. kind of you know entities. Duh. Um, so from the entity from mm -hmm. the, this query, we have an account by the email of the user, and we have an IP mm -hmm. from the IP of the yeah. query. So we take this entity. Sentinel knows that an email is an account and an IP is an IP, and then it correlates those entities with other entities from oh, other. Amazing. Yeah, with uh, from other logs. So yeah, so we have that option. And, uh, and this is something that we already pre-deliver. So this analytic uh, rule that, that, we, that we are looking at right now, this is something that, that, that we deliver out of the box. The customer could use this directly yeah. and then. All of the 50 analytic tools that you see over here, there are multiple ones because I deployed the solution multiple times, but there are 50 analytic tools and mm -hmm. all of them, we'll take, I'll take another, another example, all of them we did the entity mapping so you can go over them and see the different, uh, the different entities that we pull out from the query result. Cool. So we did that work already. Um, let's take this one. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's um, this one doesn't have, but yeah, but if you can add more if yeah. you want, but m most of the queries already have the entity mapping um, um, uh, capability. Going back to the workbooks, uh, I want to show you a couple of more workbooks. We have the suspicious uh, suspicious privilege operations. I really like this one. Um, you know, um, it, it, it basically uh, gives us, uh, it, it displays data uh, such as sensitive and critical assignments of uh, users and two, of users, two roles and profiles, um, all kind of actions and changes that were made to sensitive and privileged users. Uh, so for example, if we see over here, we have sensitive profile assignment. Um, we have the profile SAP all, as we mentioned before, and we have the different users that this, and we have the users that this user assigned the profile to. So Sentinel assigned uh, test user zero that profile. Uh, we can we see 
the past, we see over the past 90 days, all mm. the sensitive profile assignments. So we can make sure there isn't any, uh, you know, assignment that um, we didn't, we didn't know about it or, you know, happened, you know, I know, late at night when no one was in the mm -hmm. office or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. So we have a list of all the different um, assignment over here. I think if, yeah, once you click on that assignment, so you see a detailed activities of that user, of the Sentinel user, and you can see exactly what were um, his uh, recent events from, uh, from that period of time. So uh, you can click on each one of them. It's the same user, but if, if we have like, different users, so we can click on each one of them and see the different uh, activities. Um, I think I think I don't. Yeah, the multiple charts over here. I just want to show you the last workbook. Um, we have four, but I'm going to sh show you three. This is the third one. Uh, initial access and attempt to bypass SAP security mechanism. I really like this one as well uh, because again, it gives us the you know the, the bottom line. The uh, show we talked about multiple logons, so we have multiple logons by from by user, and we have multiple logons by IP. Um, so um, so yeah, so we can see the different users, and that we're trying to. Um, we can see the different users that were trying to uh, to log on into the system, and we can see it by users and by IP. Again, if we're gonna click on them, we're gonna see a detailed overview on all the different activities of that user, and the same by IP. Uh, and you can see yeah. the IP address over here. Instead of going to the tables before, if you remember, I showed you before the uh, if you go to the logs tab and you search those tables over here, custom logs, there are multiple ABAP tables. Instead of you know searching them one by one, you can go to the to that workbook and uh, just uh, see the final result. And I think I'm. I think going. You, you asked the question about if a user can uh, change the workbook or edit the workbook. I'm not sure. Right. So, yes. yeah. So all users have have the edit button over here. Mm -hmm. Once you click the edit button, uh, let me scroll down. Scroll down. I have edit of the features. Um, where is it? Edit over here, and you can see basically that this table, the table of the um, multiple logons by user. Is a query. Oops, sorry. It's a query that I can change. I can I can change the visualization. I can change the um, you know the place of that feature of that visualization in the workbook. Okay. I can I can remove it. You know. I can add another one if I want to. So this is just a template that we give to the users. You know, and they can do whatever they want with those um, with this template. So do you have this, this kind of example of where we've been working closely with Kobe and team on tweaking and tuning, right? So as we're learning in our environment, uh, how best to utilize these capabilities, the queries, the logic and so forth and bringing us together. This is a, a, a great example of the area we're focusing on to help our customers and partners uh, basically optimize for their, their space. So basically we're taking our learnings, sharing with product group, and then also uh, in the process of sharing with the external customers, if you will, Azure customers. Sorry, Kobe. No. no. Have, I have one, one more question in the same direction. So, I mean, uh, of course, from our side, we are creating somehow our uh, workbooks, our analytics rules, if, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, we are preparing what we think is best from our perspective, from our experience, and customer can customize that, create new stuff. But maybe our our own question to you is I'm not security guys, so I'm not aware of that. But is there anything what we can somehow take from SAP directly from their best practices, they predefined policy, what they will like to have and somehow build that also in our tour? Are we planning to do that? Is something already like that exists? So that's a great question. So there is a whole industry around SAP configuration, security, and best practices. Okay. So Microsoft has been an SAP partner and customer for a better part of 25 years. And so we're leveraging uh, basically our, I'll just say tenure, if you will, and learnings in the industry, I'll just say needs uh, as part of this effort. So we have the same needs and requirements as, I'll just say, a fair majority of SAP's customers. 
uh, since we're just one of them. And so we're applying that base level knowledge and, and I'll just say requirement into this capability. So we're having the fundamental or core as part of this. So for example, elevated access monitoring, SAP ships, I think you see DDIC there on the screen. Uh, DDIC is a known SAP elevated user. It's out of the box. It's used for deployments, upgrades, et cetera. And it's a high risk uh, elevated user, right? It needs to be controlled. So that would be an example of a norm or an industry norm to basically protect that, make sure it's not uh, uh, misused. So that's a, a core scenario here that we're monitoring for is that, that DDIC user as just in a raw example. Does that help answer the question? Super, super. Great. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead, Goran. Yeah, basically, uh, you, you were partnering with, with Microsoft IT that is operating SAP system, and uh, that's actually a, a great way to get a big customer input who would also use it, right? I mean, the best way, and eat your own dog food. I mean, definitely, exactly. because they operate, they know it. They're really excellent guys, so that's, that's always a good good way. Microsoft uh, uh, runs SAP and how they are doing it. So, so Aaron, I mean, um, Kobe, and I don't want to interrupt your 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 flow there, but um, can you can you share a little about your experience deploying Azure Sentinel to to uh, to the Microsoft digital environment? Actually, um, was this, was it maybe a request from you that we need something to to get it better, or, or did you hear about Azure Sentinel from SAP and uh, for SAP and then said, oh, that's that's cool, that actually really fits well, and then. How did it go? I mean, um, sure. Can you share yeah, some insights it, there? Yeah, no, happy to share the story. So uh, the product group was uh, at the onset looking at opportunities, uh, as I think was mentioned earlier in previous blogs and discussions, uh, recordings and so forth. But effectively, what about two years ago, I think it was, the product group uh, was looking to add the SAP capability. Um, shortly after that uh, initial discussion at the product group level, uh, the senior leaders in our organization, so the Microsoft IT, or as we call Microsoft Digital, uh, and the Azure uh, leadership, in this case, Sentinel uh, leadership, uh, met and discussed the uh, options and opportunities to basically partner with this initiative. And basically, that's how that was born. And effectively, uh, as the, I'll just say, IT functions supporting the enterprise, uh, I was pulled into those discussions and <laughs> we initiated initial design and, and requirements discussions and here we are. Cool. And then when, when you look at the deployment, did it work well? Or I mean, obviously, as you said, you were customer zero, so I yeah. I, I would be very surprised if everything worked well from the very beginning. But mm -hmm. um, now if you, if, if you look at this, um, do you think, um, is it i mean we now have the docker um deployment we have this functionality what what's your I, and and also maybe let let me also ask i'm i know that microsoft digital and we had hans reuter um talking to us a, a few times already talking about um sap on azure and i know microsoft digital is is very strict when it comes for example to security um, compliance what is allowed to 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 um connect to the sap system what is not allowed so right. can you can you also share some some insights there? Sure. So from a, a implementation perspective, you know, we're very fortunate that we have, you know, existing knowledge of Azure, Azure platform and how to manage this, the subscription, et cetera, and, and onboard SAP. So from that perspective, uh, we leverage those learnings from the past. You mentioned Hans uh, and company. So we we work very close with our basis team and deployed, um, I'll just say our Sentinel instance for our our infrastructure very quickly. So the standing up of the uh, capability did not take that much time and working close with Kobe and, and Yoav and team, you know, effectively working hand to hand to, to get this set up based on their uh, experience in their pilot and their prototyping, if you will, we just harness that information and basically leverage that to deploy in our environment, uh, document it along the way so we can share that information with our customers Right, so this whole journey that we're on is customer zero is for Microsoft as a company benefit, but also looking to document and for leveraging for our customers. How can we accelerate adoption and utilization for our customers, right? So those are two core functions that we're trying to serve at the same time. So for us, the implementation was very straightforward uh, to be 
I, I know it's technical. I know there's a lot of, uh, I'll just say, work that goes into it. So I'm not trying to oversimplify it. But for us, it was a, a straightforward implementation uh, with the support of the product group. So that was great, documented, so we can leverage the learnings. And then right now, we've been spending the last couple months uh, learning how to optimize the actual solution itself, tweaking and tuning, for example, a lot of those queries. You know, now that it's in the environment and we're using it in a productive system, yep. systems, we're in 15 systems right now in our landscape, we're generating a lot of data, a lot of alerts. And it's, it's a matter of how do we tune, fine tune the alerting, right, in the, the, the data so we can leverage it at, at its most optimal, right? So right now we're in a tuning mode. Um, and we're getting much better and we're leveraging what we're learning again, building that into a, a documentation set for our customers. So does that hopefully yeah, answer sure. the question? Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then from a, I'll just say you mentioned about the security and compliance side, I believe. And so this actually is a huge asset for us. Uh, we've had solutions in the past. Uh, they were disparate in nature. So you had SAP out of the box solutions, we had other uh, custom solutions and so on and so forth that enabled us to have uh, mm -hmm. visibility into our environment, but having this holistic view and having this flexibility at scale and then the correlation feature, that will give us and has given us a much deeper view into the environment at a much, uh, I'll say faster pace, meaning we're able to now see the data near real time and respond much more quickly. So from a compliance perspective, it, it gives it gives us a, a, a huge boost and enablement of a new tool and a, and a correlated centralized uh, solution. Then let me ask one, one other thing: Did you find anything already that you? Um, I mean, did you find something suspicious that that maybe you would not have found um, if you would not have already implemented the solution, or is it just um, currently running and and you're still in the phase of? Um, improving the dashboards, correlating the data and so on? Yeah, so I'll give you a couple examples. Um, the, the short answer to your question is yes, we have found a few things. Wow. Um, the, hmm. the longer answer to that is fortunately we have found these items to be, I'll, I'll just say approved activities and Still. or yeah. usage of the system, but um, we would have found it through our other mechanisms, uh, but it wouldn't have been as, as efficiently or as quickly as mentioned cool. earlier but effectively we found for example um we do periodic upgrades uh, support packs just like any other customer right we're maintaining the system on a constant basis we have a sprint release uh, model for deploying updates and whatnot so we we found some um i'll just say elevated access usage in the environment uh through sentinel much more quickly and we're able to confirm it was through an approved uh, i'll just say change control function that's so amazing. But as a customer, now we're looking to say, OK, so we found what it ultimately was a false positive in the sense. <laughs> but how do we get in front of those so we can basically tune the system to recognize a legitimate usage uh, mm -hmm. versus a true threat? Right. And so those are the fine tuning activities <laughs> we're doing right now. OK, makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Well, very good session. So and and Kobe, you said this is in part. So the uh, I mean the, the product has been around for for quite some time now. But um, these these new tables, the, the support, um, the, the new workbooks, they are all now in public preview. So uh, I can immediately use them. Yeah, you can once you deploy the solution, you can have the new tables and the new uh, workbooks. Um, the whole solution right now is in public preview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I can talk you know, hours about the new <laughs> items we're planning to, you know, planning to go uh, once we go GA. Um, I can't share it now, but uh, yeah, but once we go GA, there are plenty of other stuff we're, we're planning to do. So, uh, so well, I'm sure we're going to do another, another of this, another of this uh, video. I was so, just going to say, Koi, yeah. we, we want you back. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to. So oh, answer I when we will have GA, when Kobe have two, three sessions extra with us, then we will have GA. You know, this is requirement. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that, GA that's again. a prerequisite for certification, you know. Yeah. Uh, great. That, great. That was thank a really, you. really fantastic session again. Um, Kobe, thank you very much for um, presenting us. Also, the, the live demo, so really um, showing us the, the, the workbooks, showing us the the queries. So thank you very much for that. And Aaron, for, for your insights. Again, I 
looking back at the at the sessions that we have done in the past, I, I really always very much enjoy when we hear also from Microsoft Digital, like um, really what what is it that we are doing? What are our lessons learned? Why are we doing this? And and exactly like what you said, um, you are customer zero. You you go through a lot of pain, I guess, but at the end, um, what cost what our customers and partners can can get from this is is so valuable. So. Thank you very much for for sharing your insights as well. Thank you for having me. Appreciate all of it. Cool. Thank you all. And and Joaf, I I mean I I didn't want to skip you. <laughs> so also thanks for for joining. And I'm I'm really hoping that um, maybe even before GA we'll see all of you again um, with some some additional updates. Happy to. Good. Cool. With that, thank you, thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. And thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. bye.